Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good summer. Uh, this is Steven and I'm writing my new book as I told you in my last video. Uh, and I wasn't planning on posting a video this month, but I received a question from a magazine that wanted to talk about the future of uh, retail. Uh, and the questions were really good, so I decided to answer those questions in this video so I can share those responses with you guys as well. Uh, and the first question was, um, what do you think about convenience in a world of retail? And um, as many of you know, this is one of my mantras. I really believe that convenience is the new loyalty. It's not about making loyalty programs or loyalty cards. They decrease your margin, they don't increase your loyalty. And I personally think that uh, the biggest driver of buying behavior of cons consumers is convenience. People want to have the most efficient buying possibilities in the world. And you see how interfaces are changing. They used to be complex. Today we live in a world of one button interfaces. You have the Amazon Dash buttons, you have the uh, click here to order a pizza button. You even have this huge vending machine in Singapore that is selling Ferraris and Porsches with a touch on a button, you can order a $250,000 car that just walks out of that vending machine like it's a, a piece of bread that you're buying. Uh, it's an incredible form of convenience and you see how uh, those interfaces are evolving from complex to simple to automated. Amazon wants to create the automated consumer interface. Uh, uh, pushing a button is too much effort for a customer in the philosophy of Amazon. They want to create automated systems because they know based on your buying behavior what you want and when you want it so they can actually deliver products before you even know that you need them. And then you arrive in that world of faster than real-time customer service. So absolutely convenience is the key driver in retail growth at this moment if you ask me. Second question. Uh, retail Retailers feel less ready for digital in 2017 than they felt in 2016. Um, I fully sympathize with that. I think most retailers feel now that we are entering phase three of digital. And phase two was about mobile and social. And phase two started in 2007 with the arrival of the iPhone. Uh, and last year or two years ago, it was clear. Eh? It was about e-commerce, it was about mobile apps, it was about social media. Everyone knew what they had to do, so they felt ready to move forward. Now in 2017, things have changed and people feel that this third phase of digital has started. And this phase is about artificial intelligence and about automation. This phase is about making sure you have data about the um, recurrent processes in your industry and that AI can help you to automate them. And for many, many companies, I mean, they, they were getting ready for phase two and getting ready for e-commerce. Most retailers invested in e-commerce the last two years. They invested in mobile apps in the last two years. And now when they thought that they were ready for it and that they were really going with the flow, you hear, you, you hear all these stories about AI and this is very abstract and very unclear for most companies what to do with it. So I can imagine that people feel less ready for the future than they did a few years ago. Oh, yes, I have to tell you this. We are doing a Silicon Valley tour um, about the future of retail. It's not really a Silicon Valley tour. It's actually the combination of New York to look at the future of retail and offline retail with Silicon Valley to look at how technology is changing retail. Um, and some European retailers think this is a totally different world and that they don't find ideas that they can implement here in Europe. I totally disagree with that. I think if you looked at how um, retail has evolved in Europe, I think that we have taken a lot from the US and I think we have used many of their examples and that we are becoming more and more US-like in retail. Um, besides that, the world of e-commerce is very global. People buy stuff from Alibaba in China. People buy stuff from e-commerce companies that they've never heard of. People buy stuff from the US, from Amazon, and they are used to a global environment. So uh, because of this globalization of retail, I think that what is happening in both China and the US, and especially US for European companies, we need to have a close eye on that and see what we can learn, what we can steal, what we can copy, and make sure that we stay ahead of the curve. So we will see a lot of these real-time examples that can be used in Europe right away when you're back from the tour. Other question is food, food and digital. Um, how does that work together in retail? Because the food industry is still one of the largest elements in the retail industry. Well, uh, until now, this is, this is reality. Food remained the, the smallest piece of e-commerce in the market. Um, but this is changing. Um, let's look at what Amazon did a few weeks ago when they bought Whole Foods for $13.7 billion. 
that was a move going into food retail. Um, if you look at what Amazon did with Amazon Go, they started these uh, experimental stores where people just walk in, they grab whatever they need and they walk out. They don't need to scan anything, they don't need to pay for anything, everything is fully automated in those stores. And those are specifically targeted at the food industry. So at this point, it is absolutely right to say that food is still a minor part in e-commerce. Uh, but this is about to change. If you look at the billions that Amazon is investing in this, you could assume that this will be a huge market for them and that they will do whatever it takes to make sure that people will start to buy groceries online or through mobile interfaces, uh, through digital interfaces. And what you see is that, the, especially in the food industry, we're going to this hybrid environment where it's not just online, but where you have that smart combination of online and offline. Um, and if you look at what Amazon did with Whole Foods, um, they didn't just buy a retail chain, they also bought about 500 very strategic locations to make sure that people can pick up everything that they buy online in stores that they trust and stores that are um, located at very interesting spots in the UK and the US. Last question is about the role of brands versus retail brands and the ecosystem um, that these brands could have with retailers. Uh, I think we have to be very, very careful here. Um, if you look at the evolution of those personal virtual assistants like Amazon Echo, Google Home, Siri, uh, this is a huge battlefield for the big technology companies. And for Amazon, it makes a lot of sense. They have Amazon Echo, and what they want to do is make it as easy as possible for people to order products from, from Amazon, of course. And that's why they invest heavily in Amazon Echo and Alexa. Uh, for Google, this is a threat because if Amazon succeeds in this strategy, you don't need search anymore. So Google is going full force with the Google Assistant and Google Home. But if Google is, is like the king of the world in these virtual assistants, this is a threat for Apple in the smartphone industry. So Apple will move forward as fast as they can with Siri. So the, the big technology companies in the world are investing like crazy in these smart interfaces and in these voice assistants. Um, and this will change the hierarchy of brands, if you ask me. I think that people trust those technology brands so much that they will start to buy stuff directly through those voice controlled systems. And because of that, the big technology companies are like the A brands in the market. And for all other brands, they play at a lower level. So the hierarchy of brands will change completely. Um, it won't be the retail players, it won't be the brands that will lead the, the game, it will be the big technology platforms that will lead the game. And this will become a challenge for all brands, both retail and the brands in the retail stores, to fight this commodity magnet, because if the technology brands succeed in this, it implies that almost all other brands in the world become a commodity. And one of the key challenges for all these brands will be to fight that commodity magnet. So building an ecosystem is absolutely a priority. Um, and it's going to be a double priority. So I think for most brands and retailers, there will be no other choice than to work together with the big technology companies like Google, Amazon and uh, Facebook and uh, Apple. And on the other hand, they will have to invest heavily to make sure that they will fight the commodity magnet and that customers and consumers still choose for their, their brands directly. And this will be a big balance exercise to make sure that you, on the one hand, partner up with these technology companies and on the other hand, keep your own brand strong. Last question was, if everyone becomes a commodity, how can we still be relevant as a retail brand? Um, and, and this is going further on what I just said. It's about fighting that commodity magnet. And it's about figuring out how you can make sure that you can still influence consumers to buy from you. And there are a number of things you can do. I think the, the human aspect will play a huge role. I think people expect top human service in retailers. Um, I think if you go to a retail store, what you expect is a fantastic human interface, not just an average one. You don't want people to be friendly. You want them to be proactive. You want them to be enthusiastic. You want them to be empathic. They have to score really, really high on all these human skills because that will be a huge differentiator. Uh, second aspect will be uh, to make sure that they communicate through different channels. I mean, if you look at what brands and retailers are doing today, they still communicate like it's 2003. They're still investing in the same old platforms. They're still doing print. They're still doing TV. They're investing a huge amount of money to capture the attention of customers in platforms where it is extremely expensive to get the attention of customers. So they will have to figure out which new channels to use. And I'm not just talking about Facebook or Google here. Uh, I'm also talking about the channels that people trust. And this is different for every market. It could be an article in the press. It can be an, an article that is shared a lot on Facebook, but it could also be like 
influencers on Instagram or YouTube. So this is gonna be a very, very difficult exercise to figure out what can differentiate us retailers today in a world where digital platforms take over the, the, the top position in the hierarchy of brands. And I think this will be extremely important to invest a lot of money in that and to make sure you have a budget and expertise shift towards the new needs and that you stop doing marketing like it's 2003. So I, I hope this was relevant for you. I just thought these were interesting questions about the future of retail. And as I said, we're doing a retail tour in October. If you wanna join, just drop me an email and I'll be happy to send you some more information. And after this video, I'm going back to writing to the book, Customers the Day After Tomorrow. I hope to see you again soon on one of the next videos or online, bye-bye.